As usual, he was drunk, passed out to escape all the overdue bills. All I could keep thinking is that I should be the one in the chair bringing in the dough. While I perused one of the few closed case files, a mysterious envelope appeared beneath the door. I thought, well, isn't this something straight out of a 40s film noir? Classic to the point of cliché. My curiosity peaked, and I felt, as his administrative assistant, it was my responsibility. Okay, I'll play along. Let's find out what was worth all the cloak and dagger act. Detective, I will commit a murder at the residence of Mr. and Mrs. Edwards at six tonight. Try and stop me. This was my chance. If I could solve the case, save the day, I could show Mr. Rough and Ready he couldn't hold the candle to me. Of course, I needed to look the part. I slipped out the badge. I grabbed the coat off the tree, and with the tip of the hat, I'm on the case. As I stood there imagining the house from Psycho, I found myself staring at a typical suburban home in a typical suburban neighborhood. It could have been a night like any other night, except it was late afternoon. The hair on the back of my neck stood on end. This house screamed soccer mom. I knew the game was afoot. I reached for the solid gold door knocker and rang the bell. I glanced behind me to make sure I was alone. When I looked back, an overstuffed man was standing there where the door knocker should have been. How can I help you? I felt no reason to confirm the fact I had no idea what was going on. Uh, Detective Dagger is indisposed here. Send me instead. Where's the detective? The detective is indisposed. How is he indisposed? He told me not to tell anyone. Oh, well then, welcome, Detective... Uh, Woods. Sharon Woods, P.I. Come in. They're right inside. I walked in the house, and gathered near the bar was mustard, plum, peacock, scarlet, and white, and none of them seemed to have a clue. I decided to look for a secret passage. Because every good murder mystery has to have a secret passage. I could tell mustard and peacock were the masters of the house. Both obviously never wanted for anything, including a good meal. Her feathers ruffled as she came to greet me. Hi, I'm Mrs. Edwards. That's my husband, Mr. Edwards. Welcome to our home. We do appreciate your assistance in this matter. I hadn't had somebody introduce themselves by just their last name since I was six. Somehow it felt very rehearsed. Uh, Mrs. Edwards, are you aware of, of the threat? Indeed. How did you discover this devious plot? Well, earlier this evening, I received a message uh, baiting me to solve it. Oh, indeed. It seemed like Mrs. Edwards had a plan, but as she walked away, something seemed out of place. She looked like a million bucks, but walked like a housewife ready for a jock. Then, I noticed the shoes. Who wears Nikes with a Prada gown? I looked over at Mr. Edwards, and it was the same dig. He looked like he belonged on the beach and not at a formal affair. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Edwards, I'd like to invite you in on their special day. Now, before the Who was this guy? He was proper enough for the hired help, but why was he running the show? That nagging suspicion that had been tugging at the back of my fedora all night started to surface. And then, as if on cue, Biger Boy turned to me and started in. So, private investigator, huh? Oh, uh, take a step back, buddy. He smelled like a mix of STP and old BVDs. Yes, I am. Well... You see anything you want to investigate further? I'm afraid I forgot my magnifying glass. <laughs> well, I think you're under informed detective. Oh, God, I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm still getting used to these things. I thought I was done with oddballs for the evening and could finally focus on cracking the case. But then this strange woman caught me off guard. You all right? I mean, did you trip? <laughs> Just over my own feet, man. These shoes are killing me. Well, why don't you take them off? That's not the only time I've heard that tonight. Well, you're going to keep hearing them as long as you're wearing those trampy boots. <laughs> Did I just say that out loud? She stumbled away looking less sex pot and more ragdoll. I went over by the mantel to talk to the only normal looking guy in the room. So, uh, what's your take on this whole thing? You're the PI, right? My take on this is a little strange for my taste. Finally, someone who seemed normal. I figured as long as this guy wasn't a psychopathic killer, he could be of some help. So, who's the hot chick? Do I have a chance? I do love a girl in a fedora. Again, something felt off. I mean, I love a flirt as much as the next day. And then I saw his finger. 
Does uh, that line work on your wife, too? The guy looked down at his finger like I just chopped it off, ripped off the ring, and sewed the finger back on. Damn, I forgot to take it off. And that was my cue to take off. I needed to splash some water on my face and clear the cobwebs. I looked in the mirror, trying to put all the pieces together. So many things seemed out of place. What if I'm not ready for this? What if I miss something? What if the killer's won already? What if- Shut up! Shut up! I'm trying to think. Sorry. Oh, uh, okay, continue, continue. I had an epitome, an epitome, an epiph- That thing where it feels like lightning has struck your brain. The shoes, the rag doll and heels, Mr. Edwards wearing sandals, that awkward flirt with the wedding ring, it all made sense. I needed to confront the man I knew was in charge. I glanced in the mirror, and there was Biker Boy looming over Stumbly Girl. He had something around her neck, and it wasn't a pearl necklace. I was about to let my first case slip through my fingers if I didn't act fast. Ah! What the hell are you doing? Nice of you to show up. How's the hangover? It hurts like hell, but you didn't answer my question. What the hell are you doing? Your job. I took the case and I solved it. Saved the day and the day. It was all too easy. It all made sense. Biker Boy was perfect. Too perfect. No weird walk, no fashion faux pas. And the butler, he never does it. So when do I get my own hat and badge there, Chief? Hat and badge? You're lucky if I let you bring me a cup of joe after this one. Joe? Who's Joe? What have you done? You've ruined the entire evening! I paid good money for this murder mystery dinner party! Not to mention you burned my dead grandmother's lamp! Well, what have you got to say for yourself? Uh, uh, no, seriously, who's Joe? Just get no, back no, no. to the office. What, what about, what about Joe? I mean... Don't worry about Joe. 